we're back with another segment of On the Record with Tiffany and Kevin. <laughs> Here on 930 AM, The Answer. Yeah, where B1 Republicanism is alive and well, and we mm -hmm. are proud uh, American descendants of slaves. So we just wanted to tie that party in there. I always like seeing that. Now, my favorite section repo uh, is politics. There's been a lot going on uh, here since we last recorded. Uh, so we- Wow. Yeah, it's a it lot of things, been, right? And so one of the things- a, a real, first thing. You thought you were on some of that pillow's pain I thought that pain was really- <laughs> It was kicking in, right? Yep. Um, right. I was so, like, what's going on? I will talk about mm -hmm. something because a friend of mine, the other day, I was in, uh, I don't know, I was somewhere in the store on the weekends. And he was, we were talking, we we're catching up. He was saying, Hey, you work for a nonprofit. I said, I don't work for a nonprofit. I contract for a nonprofit. But he, well, anyway, his point, what he was asking about was that we're very loud about, uh, being Republican. We're very loud about being black first in our, in our brand of Republican. Uh, uh, politics, right? And his concern was, hey, you know, do you run into issues where some people want to give and some people don't? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> That's true. We run into that all the time. Right? There are people that, that, uh, that do not believe that, that being, uh, a Republican and being black can exist. Yeah. And those are uh, and, idiots. And I, and, I love those um, conversations. Um, there are people that, that just want everybody to go over to the other side, which makes no sense to me. Yeah, but we also have people that. within the Republican Party who roll their eyes when you say you're B one, black first, mm -hmm. right? So we get it all. We get it. It's kind of an in between thing. It goes back and forth. But here's so the two of us are 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 uh, outliers when it comes. To yeah, outliers. and so and here here's where it stands, right? So I, I have this belief, and having I'm, your own opinion, I have my own have opinion. Mind. I have my own brain, right? And that when history stands at the end of the day, right? When 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 I'm when you know, as my friends just have this preacher and say, "Hey, we're looking down at you on that ground, throwing dirt in your face." What are we going to say about you, right? And they're going to be saying about me that I, I understood what I believed. I knew why I believed what I believed. And whenever you spoke to me, you got an honest uh, opinion, right? I wasn't, I wasn't trying to, well, I, to, to placate you or. Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't, I don't live by any of that. I actually live by, uh, when that dirt's kicked in my face and I'm standing before God. I want to hear good and faithful service. And that means that uh, I don't want everything that I've done to burn up as hay and stuff. I want to make sure that his purpose in this earth has been furthered. And right now, I see a whole lot of hell going on that's being furthered and uh, not enough heaven. So when, when it comes down to what we do, and it comes down to Texas Kidney Foundation, we will further heaven in this earth. And that's why I raise heaven on legislators. I raise heaven on on uh, other kidney advocates who are not actual advocates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. But the benefit it, of that, thing. but the benefit of that, right? Because I, I don't what believe do you stand in, for? yeah, I don't believe in being lukewarm. I believe you either right. on one side of the issue or the other side. And, and you know, you got to take a stand, right? It's that old thing. If you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. Mm -hmm. And each issue is nuanced, right? But, uh, when you, when I give my opinion, my opinion is thought out and we're taking a stand on something. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Right. So taking a stand, stand on health care, on health care. Right. That's that's our issue there. And also this. Uh, so which is why I always stress. Now, I stress, you know, I, my number is always 80 percent. I think 80 percent of black people need to vote I Republican at this time. Tiffany's a 50 50 person. Right? Black people present in large numbers in both of these parties. And it should be people who care about improving the economic conditions in African-American mm -hmm. communities. Mm -hmm. That should be at the heart of everything that is being done, improving the economic conditions, well, let's talk and about dealing, with, dealing with social determinants of health, dealing with the things that are at the heart of the community. Okay, let's talk about that, because I got into a debate, semi-debate, <laughs> with, with, with a friend of ours, Common Green, right? And the question that they put forth was why? 
I know who he's talking about. So. Okay. But I ain't putting it out there. But the question was why? Because don't you know that the Republicans are a bunch of racists, right? That's what he, that's the, that, that, and, and I got to tell you, that's a, that is a hard image to overcome for Republicans well, because a lot of the people we appeal to is the base, but it's driven by who votes for you, which is why I'm very pragmatic about this when I say 80%. And that's in key areas, right? We could turn the vote. And there's a lot of issues because if we come in in large numbers, then people like me and Tiffany, we can come in and say, hey, we have a, a certain percentage of people who are going well, to be Well, my comment is, is just be direct about that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not racist. There are definitely people that are racist. Mm -hmm. that are to pretend that there are not or to pretend that it's okay is not... Uh, it's not good. Yeah. Like, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, I know that there are racist Republicans, and when they roll up to me, they get what they get. They're going to get the clock. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what that, that, but what that that's does, how I deal with but people. what that does, right, is that that breeds a healthy political environment. Mm -hmm. To where people simply can't look at you and say, oh, you're you black. You have to defend your idea. Yeah, you're black. You must be a Republican, or you say you're a Republican, you're you this type of Republican, right? Which is generally what I like to call the Stepford Republican, where they're like, hey, master, can I say, I my, like can I give you my it, opinion? I like to call it cooning and tap dancing. And no, I'm not a cooning and tap dancing. We're not cooning and tap dancing. Yeah, but you have that, right? But that, but that is the perception that's there. But, but what that, but what, what you don't have though is a healthy political environment to where black issues that affect all black people, be they Republican or Democrat, right? They affect either us directly or some family member that we have indirectly, mm -hmm. you know, things like schooling, things like policing, mm -hmm. right? And things like economics. Those are yeah. the big three. Economic, schooling, and policing impact everybody. Right. And those are the three big issues that impact uh, impact me as a black person. Right. Uh, uh, so that we education that need to be is very important. Yeah. Education is the key to uh, achieving prosperity in, mm -hmm. this, in this country, whether you are self-educated or formally educated. It does require education. Yeah. And so those resources have to come. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to get so in. We have to have an influence on. Yeah. Issues. And that's done locally. Now, I know. Uh, and I'm going to get, I'm going to make some people mad, but I'm going to say it anyway. I know a lot of Democrats, a lot of Republicans, but most a lot of Democrats would tell you that that is, that is on a national level, right? They want to push things nationally. No, that's local. You have to come in because the yeah. government is set up on a federalist basis and you have to participate in the local government and not just voting, right? You should vote. Well, that's why school board elections exactly. are important. It's very important. Though, it's important to engage in your community. You can't complain about your community if you don't engage in the processes that affect your community. Mm -hmm. And that's what what uh, we're advocating for when it comes down to um, the political processes. We're advocating for more black participation in the Republican Party and in the processes that affect us locally. Because when you start, you we see, if you just take policing, for example, we know that police departments that have, when they hit a certain percentage of police officers within that department, the incidents of racial bias, the incidents where, where they're having... Um, racially charged incidents with police officers and, and uh, African Americans goes way down. Once you hit, there, it's like 32 percent. But that's not the sole thing. There is that percentage number, but there's also processes of accountability yes. for conduct. Yes. Right. So you have to have that process. Nothing makes me matter than uh, wanting to give an individual or a group of individuals the power of God, but the accountability of a four year old. Which is and what there's we always have. an excuse and a reason for that job is hard. Yes, the job is hard. Which is what we have in policing. And it's yeah. also what we have. We, we have the same mentality, same mentality of, of accountability of God and, and uh, power, of God. power of God and accountability of a four year old with doctors. Yeah. We listen to and revere doctors and we have consistently and 
systematically become less and less healthy under guidance that has been um, not appropriate. Yeah, but that, but that, but see, but that's a system of accountability that's lacking there. But, but, but back to what we were saying on the reason that we that that we stress the political involvement part, and we stress it on. For me, it's on the Republican side, right? Uh, is to get more, is to balance out the power, uh, because right now, if you do, if you look at the, if you look at all the polls, right, all the polls right now say the majority of black people are not happy, nor are they satisfied with the Democratic Party, right? Now, I'm just going to keep this real, right? So on the other side, right, for those people who vote Democrat, uh, who are black, who vote Democrat, always vote Democrat, right? And you're waiting for uh, some white politician on the Republican side to come over to you, give you some stuff or give you an idea of what they can do in order to attract your vote. You're crazy. It's not going to happen. Because right now it will cost too much and they're running a risk, right? And on the voting, just sheer resources on the voting side, right? So that's where we have to come in in large numbers at the participate, participation. I sound like Herschel Walker. Participation. <laughs> participation <laughs> level of the party in large numbers. And that is why I emphasize that. And what does that do? That balances out, injects a new healthy, political view in the party, right? And balances out a lot of the crazy that's in Come the Come in and be who you are and support your community. That is how, you, you wanna know how you change a party? You come in and just stand up for what's right and what you believe in. That's yeah. how you change what, what the focus is in any political And you also process. have to be willing to be unlike at the end of the day. It's not about being like, it's about doing what's best for your community. There are people that will be within your community who won't like you because you have the nerve to stand up, even though they're benefiting from it. So being liked means nothing. And you have been on the record with Kevin and Tiffany, where B1 Republicanism is real, and we are truly the American descendants of slaves. Uh -huh.